Hi everyone, welcome to New Tech. My name is Miles and it's fantastic to have you here again. Today we're gonna to be looking at a really simple pattern using Fusion 360 to add to your designs to create interest and make them pop. So let's get started. <laughs> So this is the pattern that we're going to be looking at today and I'm going to nickname this pattern uh, the dancing circles because they kind of just look like dancing circles to me. So um, what I really love about this pattern is that there's just so many different applications and ways that you can use this within your design. So here's a really simple way to create some very basic abstract geometry. I've also been able to use this one design in a simple soap dish that I created and the pockets of that one pattern allows the soap to fall into there if it's wet and keeping the, the soap dry. Um, I've also been able to include it within text as well to give some interest and so kind of break away from the basic lines that maybe you would be using with engraving uh, within your CNC work. So let's jump over to Fusion to see how it's done. Okay guys, in Fusion 360, I've already drawn up the stock that I'll be using for this tutorial. Uh, it's an 80mm by 80mm stock with a slight fillet on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and use the top surface for my pattern. The very first thing that I'm going to draw is a circle. Now that circle is going to be a 10mm circle and I'm going to actually make a concentric circle with a, um, a 6mm circle on the inside. And I'm just going to define the distance from the wall of this stock and that's going to be at 12 mil there okay so using these double circle idea I found it was the easiest way to create this pattern with because um, of this slight gap in between now you can make this inner circle as large or as small as you want and that will um, change the way that your circles or the joining part between your circles look so using this I'm going to create a rectangular pattern now what you'll see is when I draw this pattern out that I'm actually going to just pull it out until these circles are just overlapping so I've actually got the inner circle attached to the outer circle of the shape next to it and vice versa so using the spacing I've actually used this and that's at 8 mil so make sure you use the distance type for spacing and I'm going to put this uh, eight circles across and then I'm also going to do the same thing downwards um, so I'm going to go eight mil down and eight of those down nice and easy click OK okay the beauty about this is that you can really do anything that you want and that you like so I'm going to show you a version that I like and the rules that I've kind of set up for this pattern um, so I'm going to go ahead and we're actually going to be using the extrude function to create this pattern with so I'm going to start in the top left hand corner and as I click through you can see that this pattern starts to reveal itself and they kind of link themselves together using the this part of the circles so I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you what you can do with it so you can kind of change direction here or you could continue that down as far as you want to go you could zigzag as far as you want to be or you could just leave a singular one by itself uh, another version you could do is possibly this crossover version where they they will cross over in between and have this part here but for my rule today I'm going to leave that one free and just have it sitting by itself so I'm going to quickly go ahead and finish this off and I'll be back soon Okay, so I've finished off my pattern and I'm really happy with it. Um, so the next thing that you'll need to do is just uh, extrude that down to make a pocket into your stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say, let's do minus five. It doesn't really matter too much because we're just gonna be using the top contour anyway. Go ahead and click okay. Okay, so that one's finished and I'm really happy with it. I can see that I've made just a small mistake here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that very quickly. All right, so I'm really happy with how that's turned out and it looks totally different from when I first did those circles. So um, from this design, we're gonna go ahead and jump into our manufacture. Now, this is where things um, start to get a little bit harder with. So I'm gonna just show you um, what some issues that you're gonna run into with this pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my uh, 
um, stock top uh, offset off because it's actually going to be done straight onto a finished surface. I don't need to finish this and then I go okay. Uh, the very second thing is that I'm going to go ahead and show you a bit of a cheat in the uh, engrave tool. So I've actually opened up another project behind that I previously have used um, a, the chamfer tool on and it's exactly the same one I'm going to be using for this. So once I open up the, the tool selection, actually that um, opens up in the documents tab. So here I'm going to borrow that 45 degree um, chamfer mill and then go OK. And you can see that it actually brings across all the values that I've previously set up in another uh, file. So I'm going to go ahead and now select the contours. Now the contours are actually going to be just the top contours because that's what we'll be engraving. Um, and there's going to be a slight issue when we go ahead and create this. And I know that this is an issue that other people have come into as well. Um, it isn't much of an issue. It's just a bit of um, confusion over the program thinking what is a, an engrave um, toolpath. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and show you kind of what happens. Um, now an engrave, what the uh, what I believe at Fusion 360 is, is that when it, uh, it goes down and then it has to follow some type of line, just like this here. You can see that it follows these lines in between, the blue lines, but what happens when it comes to circles that it can't find anywhere to go. So what it does is rejects these from the design. Because the circle, the chamfer tool will just go down and back up again, it actually rejects it because it's got nowhere to engrave or no path to follow. So what we have to do is something slightly different for these singular circles and that's actually falls under the drilling um, uh, tool path. And I'm just going to go ahead and go 150, that's fine. Okay, so it's already selected my 45 degree chamfer which is fantastic. I don't have to worry about the, the uh, tool that I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and select those um, contours, but I'm actually going to use selected points instead. So I'm going to use those points that are single. And I think I've put them all, that looks good. Um, and we're going to go across to heights, that's fine. Uh, so one thing that I need to do is set my whole bottom, and I'm actually going to do that from the model top. And I'm going to set that at, um, and it, it will end up being the radius of this circle. So this inner circle that I had drawn before was a radius or the diameter of six mil. So I need to set the offset as minus three mil. And you'll see very quickly that I actually come up with a kind of a shadow or a ghosting um, of where that chamfer bit will be or will um, drill into. And you can see that that's actually perfectly meeting that uh, circle that I had set up earlier. Um, if there is any issues, I suggest to having a quick look and seeing. So for example, if I set this as minus five, you can see that, whoops, minus five, you can see that that chamfer tool will be um, going way beyond that circle and cutting much further, much larger circles. So just keep that in mind that uh, always check the uh, the preview that it's giving you here. So I'm going to keep that as uh, minus three and go hit ahead and click OK. All right, so let's put both of these um, tool paths together and have a quick look at the simulate. I'm going to turn my models off for this and keep my stock on and then go ahead I'm going to speed that through just to this end here and you can see that it's finished off that fantastic pattern in the middle there and then it's gone ahead and finished off the drill, the drilling um, tool path around the edge for those single holes. So I'm going to go down and mill that and I'll be back soon. Okay, so you can see here this is the tutorial that I just did for you where I'm carving out using the V-bit tool.
moving on to the next one, this is the uh, capital N. I use the same geometry as I did for the previous uh, toolpath, but I ended up just dropping in the capital letter N using the text tool and reselecting those contours within that text. And the very last one here, this is a little bit of fun. I was, I was actually quite curious to see if this was going to work and it's actually blown me away. It, it looks fantastic. Now all I'm using is my 6mm ball end and I'm running the exact same uh, toolpath carve that I did with the V bit but instead with this ball end. And as you can see that's just super cool with the organic shapes that comes out using the ball end without it having that deep groove. It's actually got really soft. Um, shape to it so um, I suggest give it a go if you want to try something like this um, try not to dive too far with the uh, the ball end but this was really cool and uh, maybe you guys might be able to take this idea further so I hope you've really enjoyed today's video and started to think about some really cool ways that you could apply this for yourself and your own designs there's just a quick hint in Fusion 360 if you kind of push the geometry beyond uh, so I've used 10 circles by 10 circles and that worked really well on my computer but at one stage I did push it to like 50 by 50 and I noticed that the, my computer struggled a bit. So just keep that in mind when you're using this pattern that uh, starting simple is probably the best and adding on to that complexity over time. So I hope you've really enjoyed today's video and I'll love it if you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.